Welcome to True Footy Podcast 32, starring JT and the Bushman. Thank you for having me. How are you today, Busher? Yeah, not bad. Half day of work wasn't too bad. Oh, really? Yeah. What did you get up to today? Oh, we're just moving sheds at the moment, so I was getting covered in about 20 years worth of old paint dust and that sort of stuff. Is that a euphemism? Absolutely. Let's hope it wasn't. Um, it's been a while since we did True Footy Podcast. Absolutely. You've had a bit of a thing, haven't you, Mr. Graduate Man? You've joined us in the graduate circle. I have, yes. Yes. It's only taken six and a half years to get my degree. But it is a double degrees. Degree. Degrees, yeah. nuts. Yeah, when I say it took me six, I emphasise the degrees part, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You don't want to sound like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to emphasise that. I was going to, yeah, I was going to throw shade, but I won't. Um, good to be back. Yeah. This, this podcast really is like the the true essence of the True Footy YouTube channel, isn't it? It's like, it's why we started the channel was so that we could do podcasts, but... Yeah. Um, Obviously, like with Busher moving down to Bunbury. Joycey moving down to Bunbury. Sorry, you're, you're, you're Busher, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> My mistake. Am I Busher? Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Um, Busher by name, Busher by nature. Naughty by nature. <laughs> okay, too far. Um, Band reference. But it is harder because <laughs> like bloody um, Louis in Greece now. Louis fucking God knows where most yeah, of the time. He, yeah, he's so hard to get a hold of. He literally, he doesn't like have a place to live like permanently. Yeah. He just kind of drifts, um, which is cool. Drifts continent to continent. He really does. doing his thing. He literally has. He's been to more countries in the last year than I have been in my life probably. So, wonder so. if he'd let me use some of his freaking fly points. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yeah, he's he's toiled hard for those. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, True Footy Podcast 32, this will be um, the last, probably one of the last videos we put on the channel before I go to Europe, so I don't know, I'll try my best to make videos while I'm over there, but it's going to be hard, Yeah, yeah it's, it's always going to be harder than you think it is, um, so yeah, but... The people will be happy with some potato quality Jesse from a European <laughs> webcam setup, I'm sure. <laughs> well, no, I'm going to take my cam, but whether I yeah. actually use it, I don't know, but... Um, Surely you're going to take some pictures and stuff of all the nice yes. things you see while you're over there. That'd well, be a nice use for your camera. Yeah, well, to be honest, I'm worried about like just getting mugged. You know what I mean? Like in London, walking around London, for instance. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. But other people do. I should just stop being a pussy. Yeah, might. Yeah. But um, a few things to cover in the footy world. A few things have happened yeah. lately. Yeah, it's a nice little halfway point of the season. Nice. It yeah. is, yeah. yeah. Could you almost say it's a good time for a mid-season review? Is that what we're doing today? Oh my God, it is. All right. Um, so today we're going to do uh, the True Footy mid-season reviews. Well, I've been thinking of different ways to do mid-season review content because like, it's hard to like sit down and commit yourself to 18 videos yeah. that you'd have to do uh, and like you'd have to do it over like a week or two. Yeah, and you can't sort of... If you're going to do it that way, you sort of have to give each team a cool sort of... Yeah, yeah, that's true. Cash, eh? Yeah, exactly. So what we've done is we've assembled it into a podcast. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to talk about each team for about three minutes yeah. in an hour podcast. Yeah. Equals 54. It's pretty good math. And um, math. and yeah, and then we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to give them a report card grade for how well we think they've done and a prediction on where they're going to finish at the end of the year. It's like third grade all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Grades. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, I get you. Cool. All right. So the way we've done this, uh, we've gone non-conventional because normally the, the more sensible way would be to start from Adelaide and move alphabetically down to the Western Bulldogs. But we've gone different. We've gone different. We've sort of just split teams and And gone completely with that. randomized it because people were just going to click on it and then just skip to their team. But no, yeah. no, no, no. You've got to dig it out of the rubble. Yeah. Um, we ain't time stamping this. Yeah. Actually, I might do <laughs> yeah, it. Depends. I'll I don't, say realistically, we should. Yeah, I probably will timestamp because I don't want people to click onto it and be like, ugh, I'm not watching this. <laughs> ugh, Fremantle. Yeah, Fremantle. Ugh, West Coast. So, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the True Footy YouTube channel. <laughs> um, so, the best on the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, good luck with that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, first of all, we'll start with Melbourne because I just randomly chose to put Melbourne first. Huh? Uh, uh, yeah, and the other way we've done it is that we've, we've split it. So, you do nine teams, I do nine yeah. teams, and we're just going to keep taking turns. And um, you've picked Melbourne to chip me out for the weekend early, haven't you? Yes, it's going to really emphasize that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They're a rare win. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, true. Um, okay, first of all, Melbourne, first team to review. Preseason expectation. I think it's fair to say they were tipped to go top four. A lot of people had them as the favourite. Yeah, well, they were sort of, they were lower in the Premiership. I'd odds. say closer to top two than top four. Like some of these media speculative. Yeah, true. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. in the Premiership betting, they were yeah. lower odds than West Coast. I remember yeah. that. Um, Which is fair, realistically. What do you mean? I mean, oh, do you mean lower <laughs> as in Melbourne are more favourites from West? Is yeah, that so hack? Melbourne were better favourites. Okay. <laughs> well, I thought you meant West yeah. Coast were the better, like... No, no, yeah. no. no. So I'll say West Coast should have been better say. odds than Melbourne. No, nah, no. Nah. Um, yeah, so Melbourne are this year's disaster case because they currently sit 4-9 and nine and they're 16th. There's been a lot of talk about Melbourne. I don't really need to emphasise exactly how bad the disaster's been this year. Um, they've had, admittedly, a stupid amount of players really underdone this year. They, hmm. they, I can't remember the numbers, but it was like half the team and like 10 key players barely had a preseason or had postseason surgery and it affected their, their lead up. So they were physically cooked going into round one. Round one, they got done by the power, which at the time was a big shock, but now we're like, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense yeah. in hindsight. Round two, Geelong annihilated them by about 80 points in Geelong. Um, then they lost to a struggling Essendon as well at the time. So it really hasn't got too much better since then. They did spend big to get Stephen May last year, and he hasn't really been able to get on the park. They traded Jesse Hogan. Um, too early to see whether that was a good move yet because Hogan hasn't actually been mm. playing that well for Frio. Yeah. Um, so but even structurally, I feel like with Melbourne, he was important to their structures. Like Even seeing it with Freo, even though he hasn't been as productive, team's game plan around him being productive. So mm. having him out there, the opposition has to assume he's going to be productive and yeah, I see behave mean. accordingly. True, that's true. So that's probably affected Melbourne a bit as well, I feel. True, and they haven't got a lot out of Tom McDonald. He's kind of regressed mm. this year. Um, Wiedemann's been okay, I think. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's a young guy. He's playing yeah. well for his... For he, his they've, they probably... Because he's sort of growing into that role. Maybe they've forced it on him a little soon, maybe, yeah. with the Hogan going, but yeah. by what, needing to step that's true. him up, obviously. He, he's a lot less like ready-made than, than Hogan was. But, yeah. Um, I saw them up close when they came to Perth, and I thought they actually played really well against the Eagles, probably deserved to win, but they couldn't run out of four quarters, and I think that's kind of been the story of their season. They just can't be able to put it together long enough, probably because yeah. of their fitness base. Um, positives, though, unearthed some good youngins. Marty Hall has come in. I know he's mature age, but he's done well. Uh, Lockhart's been pretty good yeah. if you've had him in your fantasy team. I've had both. Yeah, there you go. yeah me too, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I actually traded Hall for Lockhart this week. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Bit of extra cash to burn. Yeah, I need to do my trade soon. Um, they did a mid-season full-scale review with their footy department, Melbourne, yeah. and uh, they made something like five changes, five coaches change roles or something like yeah. that. So good to see they're being proactive, and um, I wouldn't say it contributed to their win against Fremantle, but mm. you know at least they're sort of on a positive sort of mindset. So yeah. um, finals are off the agenda, but planning for 2020 has probably begun, wouldn't you say? Yeah. What do you think should be their focus for the rest of the year? What can they achieve, Melbourne? Maybe a few good wins, just as good for morale, keep everyone engaged, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Blood some kids. Yep. Or get more games in them if, you have, if you've already blooded them, obviously, sort of thing. Yeah. They do have a lot of young talent. Even yeah. They're not necessarily 18, but even guys yeah. like Petrarca, they're still like 22. Mm. They're just still young. And they are they are giving guys games. Like Baker's been getting games. True. Lockhart and Hoare, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. I did yeah. mention Baker. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, Another one I had on the trip team, actually. Oh, yeah, me too. Me too. I've had a lot of Melbourne players, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, nonetheless, I'm going to say they are the biggest disappointment of the year, and therefore, I'm going to grade them an F. Fair enough. Is you, do you agree with that? Why I'd would agree you grade them? With, I'd give them an F. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if you don't give Melbourne an F, you're not going to give anyone an F, considering yeah. where they were. What's your final prediction for where they're going to finish this year? Ladder. I'd probably... Maybe top end of the bottom four, mm-hmm. just scraping out of the bottom four maybe if they can replicate last year a bit more. Yeah, I like that. I have them bottom six uh, is what I wrote, which is a bit of a cop out because yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I think they'll be somewhere between the top of the bottom four uh, or maybe just get enough wins to yeah. slide out of the bottom yeah. four. But that's, that's about what I bottom see six, yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, well, that's Melbourne covered. Yeah. Uh, how about you stank us with um, Carlton? Well, I've got a few dot points here, but I'll have right on. Please do. Well, with Carlton, we're sort of... Well, this is sort of the case of Carlton every year, really, but there was the expectation that there was going to be a start and improvement, that they were going to start that upwards trajectory. They have sort of have improved, but it hasn't really reflected on the scoreboard. Like, even... The, I remember Bolton, before he was dismissed, was pumping out their statistics, saying they've gone pretty good in terms of winning quarters, but they just can't put four quarters together and win a game. Maybe that's an issue of young legs not having that elite endurance at AFL level, that sort of thing, maybe. I Sorry to cut through, yeah. but I just 
there was a good point I heard that um, interesting statistic that the team that Bolton fielded in his last game was the youngest Carlton team that he had coached. Shit. <laughs> Which shows that they're actually going in the other yeah. direction. But yeah, sorry, please continue. But yeah, I'd sort of. Uh, in terms of giving them a grade, I feel like they'll probably. It's hard for me to give any team a passing grade that's can their coach. Mm-hmm. And even though I'm. F- I'd say Bolton probably didn't deserve to get canned in the middle of a season. Like, I would have given him the season. Like, unless it's drastic, give the coach a season, sort of always been my thought in that area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, do you don't think you, you don't think they should have sacked Bolton? Was that your opinion? No, nah, write him out for the year. And then, then okay. by all means, fire him at the end of the year, but mm. don't mid season. Give him the season to just sort of. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one because you can make the argument. I said this in a video. You can make the argument not many other coaches would have done better considering yeah. where the list was at, but. Like, in terms of empirical data, not many coaches could have done worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's a really you need tangible course. runs on the board to yeah. keep a job, especially in a competitive environment where there's only eighteen head coaching gigs available, and mm-hmm. there's countless coaches who would love an opportunity to coach an AFL team. Yep. Would you? So uh, did you grade them an F? Is that what you? I gave them a D plus. Ooh. Okay. Cool. Cool. Because gave... you have seen that improvement, like their quarter, like quarter to quarter. Mm-hmm. Win loss record's actually not too bad. Okay, I gave Saints, them D minus. Yeah, because I think uh, they haven't really improved. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it hasn't been. They haven't enough. tangibly improved. Yeah, they're... I test that they've improved, but they've done that the past few years, really. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Prediction. Sorry for Carlton. Spoon. Spoon. Yeah. Or, I ha- are they again, actually spoon or maybe gold. Yeah. Do, they, do they play Gold Coast again this year? If they play Gold Coast again this year, that'll be important. They probably do, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not too sure. That'll be very big. Mm. Whoever loses that game wins the spoon. It'll probably be in Melbourne if they do play again. No, they play twice. They've played earlier this year, I yeah, think. Shit. Yeah, I can't actually remember. Yeah, I've, I remember them playing earlier this year. but Yeah, no, no they haven't played a second time because Gold yeah. Coast have won only three. Yeah. yeah. So, that, yeah, it must be Because Gold Coast are only a gold game ahead of them now. No, this... Oh, yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and less percentage. Yeah. So I agree. I think they might leapfrog Gold Coast, so I put bottom yeah. two. Yeah. If, if they play again, whoever wins that avoids the spoon, I think. Yeah. Cool. They're playing for the number one draft pick, so they'll probably both be trying to lose. Actually, Carlton won't be because yeah. they traded theirs. That's Adelaide right. Adelaide will get the number one draft pick. Adelaide will be cheering on bloody Gold yeah. Coast. That'll be a good podcast question later to like later in the season yeah. um, about that trade. But yeah, Brisbane, next team yeah. off the rank. Uh, preseason expectation: uh, they finished. They had five wins last year, and they were projected to improve, but not necessarily make finals. So I th- would say their preseason expectation weren't projected to make. A lot of people were bloody yeah, Brisbane for finals. Yeah, Brisbane. Brisbane. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go as far as to say that's their preseason expectation, though. I would have right. said eight to twelve. So you're saying internal expectation, or is this I, a more external? I I, gen- I, gen- I don't know. It's hard to really um, define it, but yeah. I think if you amalgamated everyone's ladder predictions. Most people had them just outside the eight, not in, personally. Mm, yeah. Um, and then round one happened and they beat the Eagles and everyone thought, yeah. yeah. Um, that would they had fun. that start to the season really in general and everyone was on their yes. proverbial dick. <laughs> <laughs> Such metaphor. Yes, proverbial. Um, yeah, so their current position is eight and five and they're in sixth spot. So they're this season's biggest riser off the top of my yeah. head, I think, yeah, definitely. Um yeah, so they had five wins yeah. last year and they're already on eight, which is a ridiculous yeah. improvement. The biggest positives I had were they thumped West Coast in round one and then beating Adelaide in a one-point game where Adelaide, a similar spot to them in the ladder, I think they're actually fifth and right yeah. above them. That's a big win for them. Yeah. Uh, and they also thumped St Kilda last week, which is it's been their best performance in weeks because they've sort of been a bit patchy lately. Yeah. Um, and going into that game, they were actually only one win ahead of St Kilda, which is bizarre. Yeah, it's, the Saints are a bloody interesting one, really, but they we'll are. get to them. Yeah, we will get to them. Um, but I thought that was an important win for them to register a big win away from home. Just yeah. as a finals contender, you have to do that. You want to have a few bit of confidence in Melbourne. Yeah. Because all the roads lead to Melbourne. Dane Zorko is having his best... Well, sorry, no. He's having one of the best seasons he's had, despite just having 21 disposals a game. He's first in tackles, uh-huh. first in tackles inside 50s, and first in pressure acts. So There's less need for him to have the pill, though, with Lockie Neal, who's just such an accumulator. He, Zorko gets to go back to being what he does best, a classy user, yeah. other, does the other aspects. You're a game. classy user. Absolutely. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, that's very true. Do you think Lockie Neal is having his best career season? 
Yeah. Because he's never been an All-Australian before, but now he seems like he's a Monty to be. Yeah. A Monty Panesar. He's been robbed, probably, of a couple of All-Australians. Okay, All-Star. okay, Mr. Frio. <laughs> to be fair, the guy, prior to... He'd led... Over the past seven seasons, he's had more disposals than anyone in the AFL. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. And he's always been doing what he's done in Brisbane. It's just he's in a new team. And there's mm. new eyes on him. I think I do think he's improved still. I think he's been better. Yeah. He, yeah. But anyway. Um, the other AA contenders, the surprise one, Hugh McCluggage. Obviously, we know he's a pick three or whatever. But uh, I didn't expect him to come good so early. One and of my big regrets, sorry, was remember that video we did at the start year where we all picked players that we liked? Mm-hmm. I, when we first did our list, the first name I wrote was McCluggage, but then I decided I liked my other names better than him and scratched him off. You're I a re- fool. I am a fool. You're a fool. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no, he's been fantastic. Yeah. Harris Andrews uh, yeah. has become an extremely good defender. Um, they're getting heaps out of their mature recruits. Neil, Lyons, Robinson, Cameron, McCarthy over the last yeah. couple of years. And that's probably been the biggest difference between them and the other rebuilding teams, I would say. Yeah. They've actually nailed their mature picks. Got a little bit lucky. Neil wanted to play for him. Cameron yeah. wanted to play for him. Carlton haven't had that luxury, for instance. Neil yeah. Gold Coast. But still, um, there's not too many negatives this year. Maybe Cam Rayner hasn't come on quite as quickly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he's a second-year player. Yeah, so second-year blues. I think he'll be okay. He'll be okay. They've also dropped some winnable games. They lost to Carlton. Mm. They lost to the Bulldogs. But yeah. it's, not, it's not too much shame in that. So a lot of it's a pretty par- in terms of parity, the comps probably as good as it's ever been. True. Yeah. True. So you expect a few of those every now and again. Absolutely. How would you grade them, Busher? I'd probably give them a C plus, B. That sort of. I gave them an A, a C plus. Brisbane. Probably a B. I'd say B. Well, they're sitting in the top six. I would have said that's absolutely A. <laughs> is there no follow up to that noise <laughs> sort of trying because I get where you're coming from but sort yeah. of well, I, I kind of yeah. did my grading system on how well have they surpassed their expectations and if they, yeah. if they hit their expectations it's a C yeah but my thing was I felt like there was a lot of expect. I guess they're sort of living up to those expectations so that's why I sort of more went a C plus B because yeah. there was a lot of people media wise at least and even general spectators everyone a lot of like, people built up Essendon this year, mm. but you wouldn't say that their expectation should have been top four necessarily, uh, in my opinion. I feel like you need to, in, they need runs on the board before you uh, label the real expectations, yeah. but yeah. Uh, final prediction for them, I think they'll... They'll make the eight. Yeah, they'll make the eight. I think that's about as far as I'm willing to really... Yeah. Um, think. I will do a ladder prediction soon, actually. Maybe even this week, but yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Your boys... F- f- yeah, we both did it, didn't we? Yeah. Fremantle yeah. are up, Busher. Yep. Uh, take us through it. Well, I've sort of... One thing with us, I'd say, is our highs this year have been higher than I'd expect them to be, like the wins against Collingwood, GWS, even the Port game. Those wins were a lot... I wasn't expecting that sort of quality that we showed in those games. And I'd say, based on those, we'd look ahead like of schedule in terms of like our rebuild, as Ross keeps saying. But I would still say our lows are still pretty bad. They're not as bad as they were. We haven't had any of those 100-point thumpings like we've had the past yeah. couple of years, which is a plus. But there's still patches where offensively we just look anemic <laughs> in patches. Like, even since the last potty where I completely shat on Ross, I've definitely softened on that since we've gone three out of the last four against some good opposition. That was quite an image. Yeah. But I still have those same issues, as I alluded to briefly before, like in terms of his offensive structures and how he can get scores on the board but saying the recent golden patch for Fremantle you sort of <laughs> golden patch you, so you know, purple patch whatever <laughs> you sort of do see why Ross is such a highly regarded coach like his defensive work like the pressure the team put on even when their skills and stuff are terrible they can put pressure and just get it by repetition rather than classing a few times I just kept grinding and grinding at you yeah fair enough so you I was going to ask you how you felt about Ross Lyon, so you're still a little undecided? Uh, yeah. I, I, I feel like, as I sort of said the last one, it could be one of those things where another coach could come in, still have the, his principles there, like pay homage to what he's done, keep what he's done there, but add a more offensive flair to it. Mm-hmm. So okay. I think I feel like that's something that could be done. But at the same time, if we make the eight and have... Sh- maintain the sort of improvement we've shown in the good weeks you can't get rid of him really you'd let yeah. him because he's got another year on his contract i think anyway yeah, so yeah. you'd think he'd be safe until then yeah you'd let him run out the contract at the very least if we 
we keep up the way we've played so far this year, I'd say. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, one quick question. Yep. If you had to pick one best and fairest this year for Fremantle, it's a tough question. <sighs> it's probably a Mickey Walters Fife toss-up, I'd say. Interesting. I had a different name. Who did you think? Brad Hill. Well, that's a very good point, yeah. yeah. I can't argue with that either. Th- those those three will be the podium. What order probably remains to be seen with so many games left. But I had one that I mentioned in the group chat the other day that I feel is a smoky for top five, like pretty, well, not even a smoky. It's like a mm. moderate smoky for the top five for Fraser Best and Rest, and that's Brandon Matera. He's having his best year that I've Definitely. seen him play. Yep, He's been great, leading Fremantle in goals, I believe. Just really... Is it he and Walters leading goals, I think? They were a few, as of a few weeks ago, but probably is Walters because he kicked out six. So yeah, Walters yeah, might, yeah, for sure. Walters probably does have the lead based on that six-goal game. Yep. Yeah, nice. So, how would you grade Fremantle this year, Bush? I've <clears> given them a B, maybe a low B+, because they have sort of have improved, like you can see the improvement. Like You did expect it with some of the names he brought in, obviously, but yeah, like the strut, like people are pressuring better. Mm-hmm. It's showing we've had some good wins away, particularly away from Perth. We've looked a lot better than we did last year. So there is reason for hope. I've gone more generous. I gave him an A because it's been a big jump up. So how many how many wins have they got? Uh, uh, I think they're on. We're just above five hundred. Yeah, seven and six or something. I think yeah. Okay. So you had eight the last two years. So you're almost yeah. certainly going to go past that. Yeah. I currently have them in my final eight. I think that's an A grade for me personally, for where yeah. Fremantle expected to be. Um, so where do you predict they'll finish? Ooh, in that seven to ten range. You can't. You, no, you just gotta narrow it down. Finals or no finals? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say finals because of that game against Port Adelaide. If we hadn't won that game against Port Adelaide, it would have been a lot more difficult. But that win, considering where we both were, mm. was very important for Freo's finals chances. Even though dropping that game to Melbourne did hurt, mm. they gave Port the chance to catch back up. But yep, yeah, cool. Especially because they knocked off Geelong. But yeah, yeah, true. Okay, so the next team we're going to have a look at is Richmond. Preseason expectation was definitely top four. Last year they crashed out of the prelims in a shock fashion, thumped by Collingwood. So everyone expected them to come back, or at least I did. Yeah, um, especially with the addition of Tom Lynch. Good point. True. They currently sit in ninth. Which is funny for the memes. <laughs> Absolutely. They are seven wins, six losses. However, their season has been smashed with injuries. Rance did an ACL round one. Rewalt did two major injuries. He recovered from one and then did another what, PCL, I think it was. I would say this season has been a good fight and good show of resilience from them because in the preseason they were criticised for being um, blessed with injuries and therefore... They hadn't really been tested, kind of. You, yeah. you know what I mean. So, um, you know, the Rance, Rewalt, Dusty, and Cochin had all been super healthy yeah. for over a long period of time. And um, I personally was very curious to see how they would go with a bad injury run. Yeah. But they fought really hard, and despite those players missing, they went to seven and three. Having said that, they dropped the last three in pretty bad fashion, and their worst performance was against Geelong, where they kicked only five goals, seven which is pretty shite. On the other hand, they come up against... Sorry, they actually only... Not, that, sorry, there's only one game for the rest of the year they don't play at the MCG. And I think it's at Marvel this weekend. Uh. Then every game's at the MCG after that. So they've got a good run home. For them, the focus needs to be staying in foc- so, Sorry, staying in the conversation for finals while their players return to fitness because uh. they've lost the last three. They can do a lot, hell of a lot more damage over the next few weeks. I think they've got a few important players to come back. Cochin and Edwards are a test this uh-huh. week. On the other side, they sit at 92%, which is fucking terrible for, uh-huh. a, for a top eight contender, uh, or at least you know top yeah. four contender, really. But um, And they've also been thumped by the contenders in Geelong, Collingwood, GWS, and Adelaide, mm. which is not what you want if, you are a, if you're a contending team. What they have unearthed this year is some good talent, Sydney Stack has come in and he's fucking sick. Uh, Jack Roche, Patrick Nage has debuted and did well. Noah Bolt has done really well. And they had Higgins last year, obviously. Yeah. So at least the talent is coming into that side despite them being contenders. Hooley is in career best form. 
Dusty is looking pretty good as well. He's looking a little bit brown lowy, mm. <laughs> like Gr- just from that form. Yeah. yeah. And Grimes. Grimes has been fantastic. Good point. I didn't actually write him down, but he has yeah. been great. He made my mid-season All Australian team, and Prestia has done really well. I reckon with the midfield responsibility. The going human up. meatball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and he's a good footballer too. Absolutely. Um, Lynch has come in just as rewalt has been injured, so mm. it's hard to see exactly how they go with a two-forward setup, which was one yeah. of the big questions going into this year. So I don't think we still have an answer on that. How do you rate their performance, Busher? Are they've, you... they've done admirably considering the top end injuries. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like okay. People considered Rance the best defender of the game, whether or not in any individual considers him that, but he's in the conversation at the very least. Yes. He's a big loss. Yep. Ray Walt, he's been a multiple time Coleman medalist. He even structurally he was even though they've got Lynch sort of playing that role with the smalls at the moment, mm. he was very important in terms of something for the smalls to crumb around and central sort of focal point. Do you think they could do some damage from sixth if they finish sixth this year with their players coming back? Who do they have? Would Rewalt be back? Rewalt would be back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rance reckons he might be, but I don't mm, know. Not with it. This is an ACL. A- it, it's happened before. It has happened. Adrian Peterson in the NFL came back after six months with an ACL. Tyson Goldsack did it as well last year. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Mm. Um, yeah, it's possible. Possible, yeah. Uh, the only reason I say that is because if they get on the right side of the finals fixture, they could still play all their finals at the MCG. Uh-huh. But, yeah. Um, <clears throat> letter grade. I'm going to give them a C because I think they've done just as bad as well as they could for their injuries. Maybe I'm being a little bit too generous, but for them to still be in the finals conversation um, and was 7-3 a few weeks ago, mm. I'm not gonna, I, I think it would be too harsh to give them a D or anything like that. Um, and my final prediction is top six. I think they'll finish mm. the top six. Yeah, if it wasn't for the last three weeks, I probably would have borderline given them a B yeah but those last three weeks probably bring it back down to that C maybe a C plus yep because they have been decimated they have and where, where would you um, predict their finish I'm going to have to go with the memes and say ninth really yeah. interesting harsh I like it though yeah. hopefully no I'm just kidding Richmond are okay yeah. as long as they're not winning they're okay <laughs> <laughs> next up Busher would you like to put us through GWS that is correct. That is who I was supposed to put us through next. <laughs> but I've sort of, my sort of perspective on them is a bit more of a long term one, sort of how I've graded them. But I'm going to sort of, I've sort of got they're basically the machine that just keeps on p- plugging on regardless of their personnel. They just keep right in the thick of the premiership hunt. Mm-hmm. They basically tread and water on par with where they've been the past few seasons, like in the thick of the top four. If they can keep themselves in this sort of... This is maybe a, more of a long-term take on them, but if they can keep that themselves in this sort of tread and water, top four, tread and water, top four type position. Sort of like Sydney. Yeah. That were for, de- like, decades. Yeah. And like, because my, my take with that is if you can keep yourself a perennial contender one year, it'll all click. Even the Eagles I had as an example. The Eagles were always sort of in the thick of it. Mm. Like, 15, they got to the grand final and lost. They've always sort of been in the thick of it. And then 18, yeah. everything clicked and they won. Yeah, I think, I think GWS well. are quite capable of doing the same. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that will be their goal as well, being yeah. in the Sydney market, not wanting to bottom out. So yeah, yeah. that will be their challenge. And this year, in terms of them getting that breakthrough, I think it's as good a chance as any, as any year, other year they're going to have. Where do you rate them? Do you rate them top two, top four? Top three. Ooh. So are they behind Geelong and Collingwood in your eyes? Behind Geelong, probably on par with Collingwood. Okay. It's sort of hard to differentiate between those two. I'd maybe give the slight edge to Collingwood because the grand finals played at the MCG. Yeah. And they've got a bit more experience on their list. How do you rate the, the Giants' chances of knocking off Geelong or Collingwood at the MCG in a final? Because that will be a tough challenge. If they're going to win the premiership, they have to do that. Or, or it could be West I'd Coast probably, or something. But. I'd probably give them a 40 Forty percent. Ooh, yeah. Okay. You've got to give. That's a fairly good yeah. chance to be honest. Yeah. So, I reckon they're a smoky. They're, yeah. they're my second favourite for the premiership this year, and I, I was kind of compelling that they beat Geelong, beat Geelong, Geelong down in Geelong yeah, this year. Yeah, that's a, that's always a big win beating Geelong. Yeah. When Freo, for example, were at the peak of their powers, we yeah. did good against Geelong down there. Yeah, that's so true. So it's a good, even though we did. Fuck all. Well, when we were good, <laughs> ultimately, it was still a good indication that you're True. around the mark if you can take it to Geelong in Geelong. True. It's a very tough ask. Yeah. Um, 
how do you rate their season? I gave them a B because like you can't really give them a sh- C sort of thing for being third on the ladder and mm. doing what they can, even losing guys like Shield and stuff and free agency. Yep. But yeah, B because they're just doing what they're supposed to be and they're doing good. Okay, I gave them an A. Yeah. I've been more generous than you. Yeah. I think I'm a harsh critic. I reckon this probably is the best Giants team we've seen. Yeah. Maybe I'm go- I'm going a little bit early, but I just think I mean, there's something about them this year, and I think they can beat. If they come up against Collingwood mm. at the GR, I reckon I would tip them in a final at this rate. Hmm. So I predict they will finish top two and lose the grand final to Geelong. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Where, where do you predict third? Yeah, I'd make the, they'll make a prelim. Mm. They're definitely making the prelim. Yeah. Lockie Whitfield has unearthed himself as one of the very best in the comp. Obviously, regardless of position, he just play, yeah. they just stick him wherever. Really, these yeah. gross. That's yeah. your style, isn't it? Got to do what you got to do, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And yeah, obviously the younger guys like Hopper and Taranto have come yeah. in. Replaced. Cornelio's gone to another level, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, they've just replaced all the outgoing talent and yeah. just made it. As I said, this is probably the most convinced I've ever been by GWS. Mm. So. And they're missing Callum Ward as well, which people forget yeah. a bit as well. True. He went down real early in the pace. Gross. Yeah, true. Allegedly. Anyway. <laughs> cool. Thanks for that. Um, now we're going to go through my boys, and then we're going to do it West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take you through West Coast, whose preseason expectation, uh, I would have said top four. Because yeah. I think they were about fourth in the premiership betting. Um, being an interstate team as well, I feel like it's... Harder to go back to back. It is. And they interstate teams rarely get like tips to be the premiership favourites for yeah. some reason. I don't know. Um, but Victorian they, media, I'll, blame, I'll give them a chunk that is, of that blame. That is probably a significant factor, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I would say conser- conservatively, the expectation would have been top four. And yeah. then believe that they can win it from top four. Current position, 9-4, and four, and in fourth spot. So they are going fairly okay on paper. Um, and one thing i got to say as an Eagles fan is I really hate this hangover talk. Because I, I, uh, it triggers me. Because I just think it's just an overused term. Because It is a cl- sports cliche, that's just, for sure. It just happens every time a team loses a game now. Mm. Like West Coast lost round one. Oh, the hangover is set after round one. Round one, you, oh. you kind of can get it. But if they say it every week, it's a bit... I think I think a hangover should be when someone completely loses it the next season, like misses the final. So like the Bulldogs, Adelaide. <laughs> yes, that's a yeah. But then again, even then, you have to they say they didn't even win it. But yeah, the hangover. Yeah, true. The hangover would be. I feel like if someone has to have a hangover, it's a direct result of them losing the hunger from winning the flag. Uh. Whereas with Adelaide, as you said, they didn't win it for a start. But secondly, the they had all this off sea, off field turmoil with their mm. their coach, and half the list got injured. So I still wouldn't even say that's a hangover. I know that uh, they were still come. Everyone still thought they'd be. Back. Yes, yeah. sure, but it wasn't because they got drunk on their own success. Do mm. you know what I mean? They got drunk on their own failures. Urine, yes. What failures? <laughs> yeah. With the whole camp, this is yeah. the whole camp. Yeah, yeah, playing the Richmond song and all that. Yeah, rumors and whatnot. Well. This hangover talk about the Eagles started when they were like mid-table or eighth or something like that. Yeah. I just don't think that constitutes a hangover. But anyway, this is a silly tangent. Um, apparently, the Eagles had one of the most difficult fixtures in the first half of the season. So they had Collingwood away, GWS at home, Ge- Geelong away, uh, Brisbane away has turned out to be a hard fixture. Um, but they have one of the easiest runs home. So that's a really good positive for them. Uh, they've had two really good performances this year, in my opinion. The Collingwood game. Collingwood game, and they belted GWS in round two as well. Yeah. And then the Adelaide comeback was a pretty good one as well. But some very, very poor games as well. Mm. Brisbane in round one was really bad. Geelong, Sydney, that game triggered the fuck out of me. <laughs> I'd even say the Derby is... I probably. did have the Derby on this list. Yeah. And the Port home game, which yeah. is probably the worst of them all, to be honest. Um, even though you won the Derby, I'd still say it was poor performance. Yeah, I agree. Either. Totally agree. Yeah, so that's where the hangover talk started, but we've actually still always been on a pretty good like winning record. But anyway, um, 106%, that is weak mm. because of these beltings, and that's going to hurt. But with an easy run home, I'm hoping they could boost the percentage a little bit. Um, there is no doubt they're not playing as well as they did last year. At this point mm. of the season, last year they were probably clearly the best team at halfway. They were 10-1. and one. Mm. Now they're 9-4. and four. 
um, and they haven't really played as many good performances. They've just kind of done enough, yeah. sort of like Collingwood. Touch wood, their injury position is better than it was last year as well. Last year, they were 10-1 despite having so many injuries. Yeah. And this year, they're getting players back. And I think Nat Nui this year is going to be a surprisingly important inclusion. Last year, I don't think they missed him too much because Lysette was having a mm. great season. But I think, as an Eagles fan, we've underrated the effect Lysette's had by leaving. Yeah. He's having a brilliant year at Port. Uh, Tom Hickey sucks. <laughs> Yeah. Nathan Vardy's completely He's off serviceable. the boil. Oh, yeah. Sorry. But Nick Nat is an upgrade, obviously. Yeah. All he needs to do is jump high, win taps. That's <laughs> going to seriously make the midfield look a lot better. Yeah. They've cycled youth West Coast really well. So Waterman, Allen, um, Petricelli all getting mm-hmm. games, which mm-hmm. is really good for a team in contention. Um, can they win the flag from fourth, Busher? Because that's where I predict they'll finish. Well, I think it's doable. Yeah, so it's going to be hard, but it's doable. Let's say that finishes the ladder the way it is now. Yeah. Week one, they'll lose to Geelong at the MCG. Then they'll or in Geelong, depends. Would they play that in True. Geelong? That's or? a good question. Yeah. I really hope not. Uh, you might cop the same shit we copped a few yeah. years ago when we yeah. played them in the finals. Yeah, true. Okay, well, let's yeah. just say we lose either way. Yeah. Um, win the second week in home. Round three away prelim against Collingwood, you give the Eagles a good chance. Yeah. So then they'd, they'd have it in their heads, but it's very doable sure. based on the grand final, yeah. round three. The Eagles wouldn't go into that. Yeah. Feeling shitting themselves. <laughs> We've, I mean, yeah, we're going real big, real early here. But yeah, um, I predict they'll finish fourth, excuse me. And an, I will give them a B for their efforts so far this year because um, they're in the top four. It's hard to do it two years in a row. I think they should be fairly satisfied where they're at. I'd like to see an improvement, but on paper, um, pretty happy with the foundation. How would you grade them? I'd say C, C plus, they're right where you'd expect. They're doing what they're supposed to do, right where people expect it. They haven't exceeded expectations. They haven't shat on expectations either. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough, Logic. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. C plus, probably because they're in top half of the ladder, so you've yeah. got to give them the extra yeah. bit of love like I did with GWS. Sure. Yeah. Even though they're effectively sort of doing the same thing by that logic. Yep. All right, you've got North Melbourne. Why don't you have a crack at them for us? Well, my first dot point, I think, is they prematurely got rid of Brad Scott, let him walk, whatever the circumstances were in Brad Scott's leaving. Mm -hmm. Because they've certainly picked up in the last few weeks. They've won three out of their last five. But on the whole, I would still say they've probably still been underwhelming considering the recruitment they had in the off-season. People's expectation, they're certainly underwhelmed. And similarly with my logic with Carton, I couldn't give a passing grade to a team that's fired a coach. Okay. But I, so I gave them a D, but I did add the caveat that it would have been an F if they hadn't had the purple patch they've had the past few weeks. Sure, sure. Um, do you think they're better off with Scott? Or oh, sorry, without Scott? It's too early to say, sort of. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Especially because it's an interim coach that was probably using Brad Scott's principles and just tweak them a little. Probably true. Race sure. Yes. I think their recent up spike in form isn't because of the new coach. I no. think we saw it a little bit leading up to the week. In yeah. fact, in Scott's last game... They just they had beat, a shit start. Yeah, they beat the dogs. Yeah. Um, in, and they were pretty good in that mm. game too. So, um, what's a pass mark here from North Melbourne? Like, from what, what can they achieve for the rest of the season? Um, like, a ladder position. What, what would be a pass mark, do you think? Because they... They, I reckon they could cl- the way where they are at the moment. They could probably climb to that ten ten ish spot. Cl- yep. Climb a couple more spots on the ladder and don't look bad doing it. It's probably a pass for them, I'd say. Cool. I had the same. I had yeah. them in tenth or eleventh, um, and I gave them a D minus because of their preseason expectations. They they clearly don't want to bottom out. They yeah. clearly like they went for Josh Kelly. They went for Andrew Gaff. Um, failed to get those two, but still went for Dom Tyson, Jared Polek, Polek Aaron Hall, yeah. uh, Jasper Pittard, big signing. Yeah. Um, no, but there's a clear strategy. Other than Pollock, bloody Pittard's probably been the best out of those recruits for. Him. True, true. <laughs> Not that yeah. I'm saying too much, but yeah, that's true. Um, Pollock's a good footballer. Pollock's been gone good for. Him. I think he's a good yeah. footballer. Yeah. Uh, they do have, you know, I think Cunnington's probably close to all Australian form. He's probably the player I got roasted most for for not including in my all Australian team, mid, mid-year all Australian team. Um, Higgins, I, th- I have in 11th spot in my Brownlow count uh-huh. as well. So they do have winners. Robbie Tarrant's yeah. having a great yeah. season. 
Um, their top end's pretty good. Zebel's had some shit games, but he's had some absolute cracking monster games yeah. as well, Zebel. For sure, absolutely. Uh, I've seen a little bit more from Elder Yu that I like as well, because he, <laughs> he, he looks really... Um, uh, at times, he's looked quite explosive, and I think yeah. like it's just taking him a little bit longer than some of the other guys that yeah. in that draft class took, but I think he's going to be a beast player. So, uh, Yeah, for North, I yeah. think they just need to um, just focus on building confidence in their their youth yeah. this year because finals is probably a long shot. Another one they could work on, I think, is their bottom six to eight players in their 22. They mm-hmm. could strengthen and consolidate those numbers. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Yeah, yeah that's a call. They they've kind of tried to short circuit a um a rebuild. rebuild yeah, so yeah. that that will be the product of it. Sort of yeah. like Geelong. Yeah. Like Geelong had that problem last year. Yeah. I'm not saying they're going to be B as good as Geelong, but uh, they tried to do a quick yeah. rapid rebuild, and then as a result, they had a little bit of a gap in their list. Yeah, there's a bit of a difference between bringing in guys like Gary Ablett and Jasper Pittard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like Jasper for the record, but I was just going with the theme of chipping him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good theme. Um, all right, Adelaide next. Adelaide. I will take through their preseason expectations. It was a tough one because they finished twelfth or something last year. The year before that were yeah. runners up, and so this year there were a bit of a question mark: were they going to return to their best, or were they going to continue to fade into mediocrity? So conservatively, I put their expectation at six to eighth. I think they were fifth in the premiership betting. So. Yeah. It's a real question mark there. But they currently sit 8 and 5. They're 5th on the ladder, so you have to say they're doing pretty well. Um, they're back to relevance. They've got a much healthier list than they did last year. Last year was horrid. Um, they started the year 1 and 3 this year and had some really disappointing yeah. games. They lost to North when mm. North were not travelling well. And then they lost to Hawks at home as well, which was a real mm. strange game in hindsight. Um, you, yeah, I don't know. don't know how to explain that one because of, of where they've gone but, uh, in their separate journeys this year Adelaide mm. Hawthorne the rather low light they did, did drop yeah, they dropped that six goal lead against West Coast yeah um, West Coast are not a bad team that's for sure but a six goal lead six, to goal, six lead. goal lead yeah and they were more than double our score at the time so um, that one may hurt them because if that had result, uh, re- resulted in reverse then Adelaide would be in the top four right now um their last two wins against GWS and Richmond have kind of set them back on the right track, though. Yeah. GWS is a ha, ha, like a quite a difficult opponent, and uh, Richmond are struggling a little bit, but Adelaide really put them to the sword. So yeah, and Richmond will put even though they're struggling, they will push you. True, yeah, and they put they actually beat Port in the same yeah. uh, in the game in Adelaide earlier this year. Midfield guns in Brad Crouch and Sloan have led the way, in my opinion. They've been the best two. Laird is also having a great year. He had a slow start, though, lad, but the whole yes, team did, really. that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Jenkins fell out of favour, but they replaced him pretty well with uh, Himmelberg. And Jenkins has come back in the past couple and looked right. okay, though. Now he's injured. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. But you're right. No, he fell out what, of did favour. They, I, don't, I never heard where that injury turned out because I saw him do it. It looked like a hyperextension. Do you know what it actually I, was I in the end? didn't follow up on it. Yeah. I just remember it happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other negative player play that's come in or uh, has fallen out of favour is Bryce Gibbs. Um, he's been in and out of the team and considering the price they paid for him that's mm. a real blow so they want to get him back in form soon you'd think it's a hard midfield to crack though because he, he's a bit one dimensional like the rest of their midfield to an extent he's a hard one to stick on a flank or a yeah, he, I think he used maybe to play, a wing he used to play on the back flank a, li- a bit yeah. Gibbs um, but who's he going to that back flanks are just as competitive as their midfield really with Laird yeah. and yeah, I mean, he's a good enough player. They, they find a Smith, spot for him. Yeah. It's just, he just needs to get back into the form. Big games in the second half of the year include Geelong this week, GMHBA, and West Coast. Um, superior percentage could be crucial this year. Are they premiership contenders? They're a smoky. They're smoky. Where do you think they'll finish? I'm going to say fifth or sixth. Nice. I have them, yeah, top six. I think I had them yeah. sixth. How would you grade their performance this year? Probably C+, because they've had the talent to be this good, but they finally got over their voodoo curse, mm-hmm. whatever the hell it was. I don't know mm-hmm. what happened all last the year. The voodoo curse in England. The Richmond theme songs finally <laughs> out of their heads and they're playing proper football again. Yeah, fair enough. I, I've given them a B plus. I'm definitely more generous than you are, um, because I think this is almost as good a season as they could have hoped for, but not quite as, as, as vanilla as that explanation is, so... Yeah. All right, next up, we do have the Sydney Swans, Busher. Why don't you take us through them? Well, I've sort of written in my notes, but they've 
basically done a North Melbourne minus firing their coach in terms of their performance for the year. They've had a pretty slow start. They've picked up the past three weeks. Similar North Melbourne, they've won three of their last five. But in terms of like how I'd grade them, I'd give them a bit more slack than I'd give North Melbourne because I've got a younger, I'd say overall, maybe slightly less talented list, even though Sydney's top end is probably almost better than North Melbourne's top end. But in terms of overall list talent, I'd probably give the edge to North. Okay. But considering where Sydney are in terms of their youth and stuff, I've sort of given them a C minus, a C. Like they're doing what they about what they can do, but there's probably more external expectations on them than maybe they should be in terms of where they're at. Interesting, interesting. This is the one where I, you were more generous than I. I actually gave them a D. Uh, I mean, it's a tough one because I, I get that they're in a transitional phase and for sure and I made a video about it at the start of the year and I said I think they'll I don't think they'll make the finals and we both said that but my I didn't think they would slide into the bottom four which they had for most of the year I think they're just slightly if they were still in the bottom four that would have got a day from me but the fact they've (laughs) clawed back yeah I've True. They have looked, the same minus they have looked very good in recent weeks uh, Bell to West Coast and as much as I hate like as much as it triggered me I think Sydney played really well um, it wasn't just the West Coast that sucked Buddy Franklin is now injured again though isn't mm. he? so that is a blow for them because uh, he was a huge presence yeah. and what do you think they need to do strategically from here Sydney given where they are in their, with their list and their youth well, like long-term planning yeah, sort of strategy, like, okay. Yeah, and for the rest of the year as well. For the rest of the year, I'd probably keep getting games into the like the kids, sort of maybe even give them bigger roles, like let dudes like Florent and mm. stuff run through the midfield more, even if that means sticking Luke Parker in the forward line, stuff like that a bit more. Your season's over, you might as well get the experience in your kids, and Luke Parker will be there next year, ready, fire, and less buggered from playing in the midfield in yeah. the second half of a season if it doesn't mean anything for Sydney, really. Yeah, fair enough. Yep, yeah, I I agree. I don't think they're going to have too much of a choice. They're going to have to play the kids if Buddy's out. Um, I do rate their list, mm. like their talent so much. Like Florent is a yeah. gun player. Uh, Nick Blake, he's showing real good signs. Yeah. Uh, and with Buddy out, it would have been better if Buddy was in so he could sort of guide Blakey yeah. on the field a little bit more. Because they, pl- they have similar playing styles to an extent, I'd say, Blakey yeah. and Buddy. Yeah. Blakey's yeah. maybe a little more aerial than Buddy, but... Yeah, that's probably a fair call. Yeah. Yep. Um, obviously, Mills and Heaney are guns. Yeah. Um, you know, they would good... even. What I expect Sydney will do, though, is go hard at a big free agent. Yeah. They, they, they will. They went hard for Gaff last year, if you remember. Yeah. Um, they were like sort of dark horses to sign him at the last minute. Um, so I think they're going to do that. So if they can sort of get you, the games into their youth now, um, load up and yeah. get a big free agent or something next year, you never yeah. know. They could probably they could probably turn it around pretty quick. I'd yeah. say. Uh, so. Yeah, you said what, C, C plus? C minus. Oh, oh, C minus. I said D. Okay, fairly similar. Where do you f- predict they will finish from here? I'll probably say 13, 14. Fair enough. I went 10 to 12, which mm-hmm. is probably a little bit generous. I think yeah. a lot of it depends on how healthy yeah. Buddy is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think he can has a huge like uh, lifting, motivating effect on the rest of the team, even if he's not yeah. kicking goals. Um, and I went uh, again similar to the, sorry to cut you off there but similar to that Hogan point I made earlier even if he's not playing that well structurally teams have to assume that Buddy's going to go off and game plan for it sort of thing very true very true so I have them finishing a little bit higher I have them in 12th because I think their last five weeks has been pretty red hot but yeah yeah cool St Kilda the other S team St KFC St KFC these are two, this is an interesting team to appraise um the preseason expectation, I think, realistically, was probably still bottom six. Yeah. As much as like, internally, they were probably going a lot higher than that. Yeah. Um, I think externally, everyone was like, yeah, probably bottom six. Yeah. Probably yeah. partially due to ignorance. But yeah. um, they currently sit six and seven and 11th. So on paper, that's pretty good. Um, it's an interesting one, though, where like, so they've had a lot of injuries this year. They mm. sit six and seven. Um, the bottom four last year, obviously. The injured players this year have been Carlisle, Robertson, Jack Stephen, not injured, but taking time away from the game. Hanbury, McCartan, and Geary have all missed, yeah. like, like that's a, that's a heavy injury list, too. Like Especially seniority. Guys like Geary, Hanbury, Carlisle, they're all experienced footballers. Yeah. Do you think and that's a- something they need in their teams, that experience, because other than that, it's a lot of youth. Very true. And do a you lot think, of Jacks. Do you think, <laughs> yeah. Do you think, though, that 
it's interesting that St Kilda can be sort of plodding along, going well, and then they have one bad loss, and now everyone's on the sack rich show bandwagon again. It's a bit ridiculous, I reckon, on the whole, the shitting on him one week, going it, and then not yeah. the next week, depending how they go. True. Because I didn't expect, Saint, especially that start to the season they had, I did not see that coming at all. There is a caveat to that, because they did have some very easy fixtures. They Their wins this year have been Gold Coast twice, Carlton, Melbourne, when they were really mm. struggling, Hawthorne, uh, who had a few injuries that game, I think O'Meara mm. was laid out, and Essendon. Nah. So... That is probably the answer to a lot of this. Yeah, to be yeah that's fair. Reduce score. Sorry, they've reduced their scores against this year by a long way. I think before the weekend, they'd reduced it from ninety-seven points a game to eighty-six, which is actually quite significant. Yeah. I think the average score is around about eighty-six. So they've dropped it. They're defensively a lot stronger this year. Um, they've got a little bit more out of that young generation. Gresham's become one of their best players. Uh, Billings has re-emerged I was going to say Billings is like everyone was trashing Billings for years now because mm. he was just an easy target for someone who wasn't fulfilling his talent yeah. and now he's well he's I have him like top 10 or I had him like 7th in the brown at the moment yeah. which is ridiculous because he had a because when they have one he's bobbed up yeah exactly and, the, and when they had that purple patch he was averaging like 30 disposals yeah. so uh, Roman Marshall has been the other big one for them um, as yeah a, I've liked a, the look of Marshall so far the Kiwi born um, Ruckman Last weekend, though, was a bit of a blight on St. Kilda. They got smashed by Brisbane. And as I said, there were only one win behind them going into that game. They were playing at home. And this was a good chance for St. Kilda to sort of validate their form this year. Or their position, rather. And they failed that test miserably. But to be fair, every team does have shockers. So, Mm. Um, On the whole, I think their win-loss flatters them. Six and seven, I think they're... I hadn't realised who they had won against. You do have a point there. I think we had that... First month of the footy where um the, all the bottom teams played each other. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I do get a lot of hate from St. Kilda fans, or at least a couple of them, because like, I never tip them. But yeah. I'm like, yeah, mate, they finished bottom four last year. <laughs> Not that many people are tipping St. Kilda. Yeah. Although I did tip Carlton to beat St. Kilda, so mm. that was where the, that would That might have triggered a few Sainties. For sure. Sainties. Um, despite all I've just said about them being flattered, I have given them a B-. minus. Because I think they've performed fairly well and you've done all they could have asked for them uh, of them in a year where they've had such bad injury luck. Mm. And they're, they're going okay. Yeah. They're going okay. I think this they could be the year before a good year, I think. Yeah, maybe. It sort of has that potential. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, st- I think they're going to f- slip back to the bottom four, though. For the re- finish the season finish in the bottom Finish the season four. in the bottom four. That's my bold call. Where do you think they'll finish? It's hard to argue, I guess. I guess it's Carlton, Gold Coast, who else? Melbourne and Bulldogs are the bottom four at the moment. That's true, and they're both teams I rate higher than St Kilda. Yeah, yeah, I could say Doggies and Melbourne overtaking the Saints. Yeah, personally, I think that is the case. Um, I'll put them in that similar spot. Who was I put in the top half of the bottom four? You said Melbourne. Yeah, I put him in that similar sort of position, maybe just out of the top, just in the top four. The bottom four, sorry, not the top four. <laughs> That'd be a fucking miracle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaking of top four, why don't you take us through Collingwood? I'd sort of say they're doing about as we expected them to be. They're in the thick of things. They're second on the ladder. But I would say they have shown some weakness throughout the season. The Freo game, even though there was the controversial finish with the touch and stuff, ultimately Freo ran over the top of them. You know all about controversial touches, don't you? Settle down, Rolf. That's dark. <laughs> they nearly dropped games to Carlton and Sydney, which is bad considering they're a grand final team, mm-hmm. like expectant team, that sort of thing. And even that Eagles game in round three that you've alluded to, that was a bad loss for them, especially coming off that grand final. They really needed to... That was like a... Not necessarily as important a win as any, but it's a real good statement win sort of thing. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I've kind of found Collingwood... <laughs> have just been going through the motions this year a little yeah. bit, done exactly what's expected of them, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. I think they belted Richmond in round two or something. They look really yeah. dangerous then. But they've kind of just done enough against a lot of teams. Bull- yeah. Bulldogs got with him two goals of them twice. Yeah. Carlton Carlton them. led and shut the Carlton led, shut mm. the bed and then nearly unshut the bed. <laughs> Gross. Um, St Kilda 
They beat St Kilda by about 41 points, but yeah. St Kilda pushed them for three quarters. They did have some convincing wins because I did go through their record. There were some they? pretty convincing wins in yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Richmond comes to mind. Right. Um, they're not playing bad footy by any stretch, right. but I think when we assess their list power, their talent... Um, You'd expect you, them to be closer to Geelong than GWS. Yes. Yeah, I mean. yeah, you would. I think that's yeah, yeah. a good summation. So I... Well, how would you grade them? This is your take. I gave them the I gave them the B, just sort of because it's like they're chugging along, doing their thing, and they're top two, so you can't really give them below a B. But mm. in terms of expectation, they're doing what they're supposed to. Yep. So not really an A. I've given them a B too yeah. because they've just been. Yeah, I mean a C would be too harsh for them being yeah, third exactly. or the But second. Oh yeah, yeah, second. I predicted they will come third though. Yeah, like I said, yeah, G Dub's overtaken them. Yeah, but um. I think it's probably a good sign, I guess, if they're not playing amazing footy in their third. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They do have another gear to go to, there's yeah. no doubt. So if they time their run final for the finals, yeah. they're going to be very hard to stop. Is so. Stevenson back for finals? Because I don't think I don't so. don't know. Wait, so he got banned at the end of round 14, so yeah. that's eight games. He might be there for a prelim or a grand final. Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. Because if they win week one... If I'm doing the math right, then he will be back for the grand final. Yeah, similar with the gaff thing where there was the math yeah. depending if people win and lose prelim or oh, no, qualifying or whatever. They ruled that out. They gave him eight weeks. Oh, yeah, that's right. That, yeah. was, that, that was the question of... Yeah, yeah. they just did it. Yeah, yeah. because I remember there was a lot of questions going, yeah, if they give him the right suspension, he could scrape in for the grandy. Would have been huge. I would have been triggered, I'll be honest, if he played have. that year. Yeah. Um. Because you're racist. <laughs> Port Adelaide. Yeah, I hate white people. <laughs> Goddamn whiteies. Don't we all? Yeah. Port Adelaide is the next team to go through, and they're an interesting team for me. Preseason expectation. I put eight to twelve conservatively yeah. because of where the, you know, they finished, like just outside the eight last year. And they're notorious for inconsistency. Yeah, exactly right. And they lost some experience. They traded in some draft picks, which I'll get to. So they currently sit seven and six in seventh spot. They, yeah, as I said, they traded out Wingard and Polek, which was expected to hurt them. And Jasper Pittard, mate. That's, yes. You, you forgot. Yeah. He's an important man. A huge blow. They took three first rounders, which usually indicates a team might be thinking about going towards the youth path. But instead, they've integrated those players into their best 22. And, and they've killed it. They have absolutely killed it. So Dersma, Butters, and Rosie are among three of the better Rising Star candidates going. So That's probably um, three of the top five almost. Yeah, I Maybe not Arguable, butters. not net specifically. Oh yeah, butters has been shit. Despite <laughs> not me, not shit. We're not shit, but <laughs> yeah, not good enough. Considering I, we did that bet for him to win the bloody rising. Yeah. Him, I tipped him to win the rising star. Was it? Yeah, because he had a hell good JLT. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, we hey, move on. Twenty three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd say the main story for them has been Travis Boak, who has come from resurgent. Um, yeah, resurged. He resurged. He's gone from. I wouldn't say mediocrity, that's harsh, but he was sort of fading out in his career. They were playing him a different role. Yeah, exactly. And now he's in career best form, and yeah. I have him equal second in the brown, though, at the moment. Yeah. Um, Rockliffe was one I pegged to come back strong this year. That's exactly what's happened since he got over his groin issues. The recruits have fired, uh, like I said, the young guys, but also Scott Lysett has been a yeah. massive find. I think when he was signed, a few of us were thinking, why would they invest so much money into a second ruck for Ryder? Do you know what mm. I mean? Like, because they have a really strong first ruck and rider, but he's actually been fantastic, Scott Lysett, as much yeah. as I hate to say. And Ryder's been pretty good as a forward when yeah. they play him in the forward line. Yep. Um, the danger for the power now is that they sat 11 and 4 at this time yeah. last year, and they missed the final. So I'm wary of, t- wary of going too early on them, but they did just beat Geelong. Um, they've smashed West Coast in Perth, so they can mix it with the good teams, I think. Mm. Lola. Would, it's this harsh, but the Richmond loss in Adelaide when Richmond were depleted. But I think it was a good game of footy. The Freo so. loss as well, I think, was bad because going into that game, we were in we were eight and ninth or whatever. Yeah, okay. It was basically, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, as far as negatives go, that's not too mm, bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they've also had their injuries, so um, they're going pretty well. I think they have a hard run home. That's going to be their obstacle. How would you feel if you're Ryan Burton right now? who was forced to leave Hawthorne to join Port. Do you think he's happy with it? He's from there. Yeah. I and think he was pretty not pleased, though. Mm. He's had some good games recently. Mm. He's getting his form. Because he was one, his first year in the league, killed it, and then he, he had the definition of a sophomore slump. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's. Yeah. I'd say he must be feeling fairly okay yeah. with where they're at. Oh, 
You dog. Someone's let him out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's cute. <laughs> right. He's very lovable. <laughs> I'm just joking. He's all right. He's a um, delightful chap. I've given Port a B for their efforts because I think they have strongly developed the young kids. They've come on as, be- as good as they could hope. They've covered the losses of their departures and they're in the finals conversation. They're seventh. I think that's fantastic from them. What do you think? I'd say C plus B. Because even going into that draft, they'd planned on making splash with that draft. So they've done that. Yeah. They've yep. done what they've planned. But yep. what they planned was probably a bit above what people expected. So I'd probably give them the B. Fair enough. Uh, final prediction for the end of the year. I have them just missing the eight, even though I talked them up. Hard fixture. Yeah, I have them just missing the eight as well. Hard fixture, but Frio with a team that yeah. I had displacing them. So yeah, that was pretty much me when you had had made me make a call whether Freo would make the finals was between them and Port, and I ended up choosing Freo. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I'd say our home field advantage is probably better than theirs. Yep, the enough. way they've played, like that Richmond game you brought up, that mm. sort of thing. I'd say we've got better runs on the board. At home than they do. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. No comment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why don't you take us through Hawthorne as our next team? Well, it's sort of doing the fall off I was expecting last year. With the bet and everything, I was expecting the fall off last year. But, yeah, I think they're starting to the, the fall off this year. Just to clarify, the bet for all our new listeners was Busher bet that if Hawthorne made the grand final that he would get a tattoo of Bruce McAvaney and Silver Rioli making out, yep. tattooed on his butt. Yeah. Um, that was the bet, yes. Yeah. We were only... It was a pretty safe bet. Really. Yeah, well, they made a semi in the top four. Yeah, they got closer. I was shitting myself a few yeah. weeks ago, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, but that was unrelated. But yeah, another thing, uh, they do have a hard month coming up as Hawthorne. They've got West Coast, Collingwood, Fremantle and Geelong. Yeah, that is a tough month. Yeah. Even though both WA teams are at home. Yeah, uh, but another thing I remember I was watching like one of those post footy analysis shows. They mentioned that they have no highly rated youth in terms of where they're like under twenty threes or whatever. They have no one rated higher than above average. I think was interesting. The, yeah, even though I probably wouldn't say it's quite bad. Like guys like Warple are good. Yeah, wait, wait. So why isn't where's Warple rated? Surely he's he's a very better, good player. Yeah, I'd rate him above above average. Is this champion data though? Probably champion. Doesn't champion data, data rate Pat Cripps as average? Probably. It's yeah. probably based on champion data or something foolish like that. But yeah, yeah it was okay. some statisticals like Robbo or something rattled it off saying they have no youth rated above like a... Interesting. Yeah. Warpool's a gun. Yeah, I like Warpool. But what they've done well is draft well with average draft picks. Yeah, late you know, picks, yeah. And they turn them into good role players. And yeah. then they've shown that they can trade in good players. Yeah. So Wingard's joined them. Cornelio's probably going to join them. But that's the question I want to ask you. Where Hawthorne are at the moment... If in the next two years they sign Cornelio and then Whitfield as free agents, does that make them instantly a contender? Cornelio and Whitfield. They'd have to sort their bottom six or eight still, but it'd make them a shitload closer. Yeah, I agree. But it would be interesting midfields with Cornelio, Mitchell and O'Meara, the three, all the yeah. same age from WA, all from the same WA team. Yeah. I'd like to think we could, could have lured one of them back if all three of them end up there. Like, yeah, if that's know. what happens, the hindsight would have been, I wish we could have... Oh, right, yeah, A WA yeah. club could have lured one of those guys back. Yeah, what is this bullshit with Hawthorne getting all these players, eh? Fucking oath. Where do they get the bloody money year after year? It's not the money that concerns me, because as you say, their bottom six is weak, so I don't think mm. they're actually... Salary cap's an issue. They're going to they're gonna be able to afford these players. What surprises me is the... What is the drive? What is the allure? Was it? I think O'Meara. Clarkson's a factor. Yeah, yeah, I think O'Meara when it went there because their medical facilities and, and stuff yeah. like that are fantastic or something. Yeah, like they that. have good medical. That's they've gotten a few guys with the medical yeah. shtick, I, f- I believe. Mm. Frawley, I think, was one who's having some health issues when he gotcha. came yeah. over. That this was years ago. I'm probably mm. talking out my ass, but I think that probably. was the case. Yeah. <laughs> um, where do you think Hawthorne's going to finish from this point? Twelve. Yeah. I think I had 13th. Yeah, 12, 13, that sort of area. And how would you grade this, the start to the season? I sort of gave them a C, just sort of. Mm, Generous. I had low expectations. You did too, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I gave them a D on the basis that they finished fourth last year. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember where they are at the moment. They're like 11th or something? 11, 12, that ballpark, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, okay. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm criminally always underrated them. I think I was the same as you last year. I didn't think they were that good. Yeah. 
but yeah, I don't want to rag on them too much. Yeah, we got we got a couple of Discord boys from Hawthorne that are nice fellas yeah. that I don't want to hate. And it's hard to ultimately <laughs> rag on them with all the success they've had. And they're... oh yeah, it's not it's not ragging on them. Yeah. Like I think they're a fantastic organization mm. for what they were able to achieve. The fact that they've just completely good, they've done this um, three peat instant rebuild yeah. like it's ridiculous. They're a fantastic club. Next up, we have the doggies, which I will take us through preseason expectation. 10 to 14th, again, a little bit ambiguous, it's a bit vague because they're sort of like a rebuilding team. I think I made a video in the preseason how I thought they might not necessarily improve because since their premiership, they've clearly tried yeah. to almost rebuild on the fly. Like mm. they've, they've gotten younger. Yeah. They currently sit 5 and 8 and in 15th. That's in the bottom four, isn't it? Yeah, they were in the bottom four. 5 and 8 is actually not a bad ratio for yeah. a bottom four team, I just realised. That's what I meant with the parity. It's yeah. Like, even the Bulldogs versus, like, Collingwood. You pick Collingwood, obviously, but... It was only nine points. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I'm, I, I meant in a hypothetical future matchup, I was sort of... Yeah. yeah. Right, gotcha. Like, for bottom four team versus top four team, you wouldn't completely shit on the bottom sure. four team. Sure, Unless it was, like, Gold Coast or Carlton. But mm. even then, Carlton, if everything clicks, it's a sniff. <laughs> Gross. Is a Troy Buswell <laughs> a sniff? <laughs> WA people will get that reference. <laughs> For the Dogs, their best win has been... Sorry, their best this year has been fantastic and their worst has been quite bad. Mm. So they've had some big performances this year. In round two, I think it was, they came back from seven goals down against Hawthorne. Uh, they batted Richmond and they beat the Lions in Ballarat. And in both games against Collingwood, as we said, they, were, they kept them to under two goals, which is ridiculous. Their youth has been fantastic. I'm a big proponent of their youth, and none of them have been better than Aaron Norton. Mm. Just as a side note, would you play Norton forward or back? Ooh, that is a toughie. I guess on positional need, I can say why they're playing him a forward, but he, mm. he does seem a natural back. But then again, I remember when it was his draft year and I wanted Freo to take him because he played with us in Peel and whatnot, mm. and I really liked him as a tall prospect. I was sort of hoping Ford, but that's because Ford was a bigger need for Freo specifically. Mm. So I'll probably just go if he feels whatever hole you need him to fill. Oh, mate, keep it footy related. I was going to say, he also does play with wherever you need him to on the footy field. But... <laughs> that's funny. Nah. So um, I was watching AFL Access, just yeah. to plug another YouTube channel, and they made a good point. Um, Ryan said that if you have a guy who can play forward, you might as well play him forward because it's much harder to get a really, like, elite key forward. Yeah. Key backs are a little bit easier to develop. It's back line's a bit more systematic, put a guy yeah. in the place to take an intercept grab. You, need, grab, you yeah. need more footy smarts to be able to play forward. Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty compelling point, even though I like him more as a defender. But if he can become an elite forward, that's a huge weapon. Yeah. Especially because Shaggy's been a complete dud for him. <laughs> Harsh. He's still young. But fair. Like Fremantle, the Bulldogs' heavyweights have been getting it done. McRae, Hunter and Bont have all been really good all yeah. season. Uh, Even support from Libba. Mitch Wallace until they both got injured. Both yes. Provided solid support. Yeah, I was going to say, Liberatore made a strong comeback. Dunkley is breaking out this season yeah. as a midfielder. He's having a great year. He's sort of, he's tased it, but he's doing it consistently week to yeah. week now, which is good to say. Yeah, he's a pretty young player. So. Yeah. Um, Caleb Daniels in AA form almost is as yeah. a defender. He's been brilliant and was great for my dream team team on the um, weekend. Very nice. Inconsistency continues to mm. plague them like no other team almost. Yeah. They've lost to Carlton, Gold Coast and North this year. I'm surprised Bevo isn't getting shouted on more compared to guys like Richardson and whatnot. Yeah. I thought he'd be getting comparable amounts of shit to an Alan well, Richardson or a Warsfold. I suppose, but Richardson's been there for five years and Bic, uh, yeah. uh, Beveridge won a premiership two years ago. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Still... I think that's, I would way rather have beverage person. I would too, obviously, but yeah. I'm well, I'm not saying get rid of him by any stretch. I'm just surprised right. there's not more scrutiny compared to some of these other guys that are. I reckon there is a little the bit. Barrel. There is a little bit. It doesn't it doesn't reach mainstream media, but I reckon internally there is a bit of pressure, yeah. like from Bulldogs fans. But anyway, yeah. um, they've lost Boyd and Pickin this year, which is a downside for them. Um, and Shacky and English are under the pump, but. They are both very young key position players, so I urge people to have patience. Um, like, obviously, key position players are known yeah. for taking longer. Bailey Smith has been unearthed as a potential star midfielder as well. Yeah. So, um, it's been a real mixed season for the Bulldogs. I have graded them C as a result because they're pretty much doing exactly what I expected them to do. Yeah, I'd give them a passing grade. Yep. 
Is that a C? Then? So yeah, yeah. And where do you think they'll finish from here? They'll probably climb out of the top four, but probably just bottom. Uh, bottom four. Sorry, but just. Yeah, I have the same. I have them in the bottom six. Yeah. Uh, cool, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. All right, Butcher, you have got Geelong. Well, they're basically doing what people were expecting last year when they brought in the Holy Trinity and spruiked it all, but they finally figured out how to optimise their talent. I've, I think I've made this point before, but they have no way to get their guys to make sure stuff happens wherever they are on the field. They've really had productive youth, which has been a big surprise for them, not just Tim Kelly, who's obviously probably a top two or three favourite for the Brownlow at this point. But even guys like Constable until they were dropping in, like Parfit's been playing pretty well in patches. Yeah, their youth looks pretty good. Where did you expect Geelong to finish Brian this year? Brian Myers is another one who's looked great, actually. True. Yeah. This year, in terms yeah. of... What my was your pre expectation? I probably had him in that four to seven range. <laughs> Fair enough, very specific. Like, like making the eight, but... okay. You know, yeah. Not being world beaters about it. But yeah. They were a little bit divisive because of the way they crashed out of finals last year and how old they are. Uh-huh. That I think a lot of people were like expecting them to miss the eight. That, that's a very uh-huh. popular thing with a team that falls short if they're old. Yeah. Everyone just sort of assumes they'll get... Yeah. Like, yeah. Happened in North Melbourne when they still had Boomer Harvey and all yeah. those dudes. Yeah, even West Coast. Yeah. They were pretty old and they dump players and then... Yeah, yeah I remember thinking, yeah, they're done. Yeah. Um, it's just a, it's a bit of a misnomer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, Geelong have been... And outside. another point I had written down for him, sorry, is that their bottom 6-8 players aren't as much of an anchor on the team's performance as they probably were last year. Those 100%. bottom 6-8 are carrying their weight. They got someone like Gary Rowan who you'd come in and yeah. he would be a bottom 6 player, but he's been... Great. Like Dalhouse really, even. Yeah, Dalhouse as well. And their forward line is kind of revitalised mm. as well. Um, obviously, Hawkins is playing well. Danger's having more of a impact up there. Yeah, Gaz is there. Gaz is up there. Um, but then Dalhouse and Rowan... Radigalia, Grimeyer, Radiga- they're a lot yeah. more dynamic there, and yeah. that's that's been a big plus for them, I'd say. Yeah. Um, how big is the gap between Geelong and the next best side? I don't think it's huge. No. I think Collingwood and GWS can do them, but I'd probably say probably pretty much what the ladder says: game gap okay. in terms of the ladder. <laughs> Two games, isn't it? No, they're a game. I think they're oh, a, no, only game. They lost there. Yeah, because yeah, they Port it's, got them. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I had a look at the ladder just before this thing, so I'd like to think my memory can hold up that long. Yeah. I think they are... I, I don't know. I've just got it in my head that they're going to win the premiership for sure. Yeah, <laughs> but they're the favourites. People probably said that about Richmond last year as well. Yeah. Um, it's theirs to lose. I'll give you that. Yeah, I don't know. They just look really ominous. I just got this weird... I'm weirdly convinced. Are we both going to rate them A+. plus? I've given them an A. Ooh, girl! <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I've given them an A+. Plus. I don't think they could be doing better than they are. Uh, I think they've smashed it this year. And yeah. I predict they'll finish first and win the flag. Fair enough. What's your prediction? Flag? Hard can't pick against it at this stage. You'd love to just oh, sit mate. on the fence, don't you? I'll Which is fair. Get me a gig in fucking politics, mate. I'll be sweet. <laughs> oh, yeah, wouldn't tip against it. Yeah, um, yeah it wouldn't tip against climate change. <laughs> <laughs> Gold Coast Suns are the next team, Bush Daddy. Uh, mm-hmm. That I will take you through. Um, preseason expectation. Histori- I think everyone all time historically shit teams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a bit of a narrative around how bad they were going to be. Um, I have bottom two written down, but I think everyone expected the spoon for sure. But they've they've always managed to elude the spoon. They've only won yeah. the spoon in their first year, so they've yeah. won the, le- the spoon less than GWS, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, they had Gary Ablett though, which helped in those early days. True. I suppose, yeah, but still, they've yeah. always been the worst team. Or, yeah. well, you know, not quite. But it shows how bad Carlton are. Yeah. Current position, they are 17th and 3-10. and 10, yeah. But they were 3-1. and one. They've lost <laughs> nine in a row. Yeah. But I don't think anyone has faced more adversity going into this season than the Suns had. They have been... Re- well, they've rebuilt the list entirely since 2011 already and never, yeah. like, got out of, yeah. like, higher than, like, 13th or something stupid. They lost Lynch, May, Hall and Lyons, amongst others. Yeah. There may be more. I can't remember off the top of my head. But Lynch and May were yeah. their captains. So, like... Lost both captains. Yeah. It's not often a club has two captains. It's even less often you lose both of them in exactly. one year. Exactly. Um, some expected them to to fail to win a game this year. I was and probably closer to that. than I didn't expect them to not win a game, but I was probably closer to that than probably even where they are currently. Yeah. So, they started 3-1. and one, So, that's ridiculously mm. good. And they have lost nine in a row, and they've slumped to second last. 
But in most games, they have been pretty competitive right. even away from home. They, they were good against the Eagles, only lost by a few goals. Uh, I think they pushed Port for three quarters as well. Um, they could have won more. They blew a golden yeah. opportunity against St Kilda. They were like five mm. goals up. And Melbourne, if you remember that game, where they were a goal up with like less than a minute to go, and then Melbourne got a goal and a point in the last minute. Oh, yeah. Um, that sounds vaguely familiar. Oh, they also trailed Geelong by just two points at three quarter yeah. time in their game. So, um, huge improvement. I'm, I'm loving what Jew's doing up there, and I think they've been clearly better than Carlton. And they're, they're I don't know if it, people just underrated their list because of the ignorant, and mm. like, including myself, we're ignorant about what they've been able to develop up yeah. there. Um, but I really like the way they can kind of stay in games, and I. Unfortunately for them, they've had injuries to young guys that they want to develop, like Ainsworth, Rankin, and Bose yeah. um, have missed a bit of footy this year. Um, Rankin th- hasn't played a senior game yet, has he? I don't know. I don't think so. No. Um, he's been injured every time yeah. I look at it. So, yeah, I could be wrong on that. Because right. I was going to bring him in as a later cash cow in Dream Team, but he hasn't played yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, right. But I think he's like 270k or something. Yeah. Like, he's expensive. Um, I think they have some really good talent, personally. I really hope that they succeed and develop them properly. Guys like Rankin, Lacocious, like yeah. I like really like watching them play. Um, I've given them a C plus, Busher. What have you given them? I'll be honest. Based on my expectations being that low, I'd probably give them a B almost an A because my ex- more because my expectations were that low and they've yeah, right. exceeded them. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't mind that. It's just I guess the nine in a row is kind of what made me mm. think, maybe, but um. Yeah, I'd say B probably based on the nine in a row, but... I think they should be internally happy. Yeah, I'd be ecstatic if I was them internally. Yeah, they just can't fall away now. Mm. That's be, that'd be yeah. a trick. Um, yeah. Excuse me. All good. I think, are we up to our last team? Yeah, I've just got Essendon left. Fuck, I hope we haven't, like, just missed a team. <laughs> I, don't I don't think we have. I think we've been pretty good with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, why don't you take us through Essendon and we'll finish off. Well, that. my first dot point for them is that they're about as consistent as Michael Christian. <laughs> the match review officer for those who don't it know was who. very consistent as being stupid consistently inconsistent <laughs> got him but I will say that they've probably had a much better start than they did last year because I remember when they, last season they dug themselves too big of a hole to get out of to make finals yep I feel like they could have still set themselves up better than they have but they're still in with a shot but I think they probably I've got might still miss finals so I was looking at their run home. Four of those nine games should be wins. Like, realistically, they'd be the favourites. They should win them. And then there was a few tough games where you'd go, the team they'll verse and might be a bit of a better team, maybe better form. But they're winnable games, and they were at home for Essendon as well. So they can probably pinch a couple of those games out of the nine as well. So if they do that, they might make finals. But mm. it's going to be a battle for them, I think. The amount of people that commented on my preseason ladder prediction and put, how the fuck do you have not, Essendon not being top six, bro? <laughs> fuck off, Count. <laughs> 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 Look how stupid that is now. Anyway, okay. just a little bit of fire. Yeah. Um, okay, so what do you think Essendon need to do for Wisher to be free of the pressure? Because I, I think it's like every second week, every time they lose, it's back on. They need to make the finals, I think. From here? Probably. Do you reckon? So, because the expect, as you were saying, the, everyone's expectation, all the people going, yeah, it's in top six. Yeah, yeah the, that's just stupid. I think that's half the thing, though. Half the time, coaches are fired. It's based on external expectations. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so like with Carlton, they were insisting, oh, it's not about wins and losses. It's not about wins and losses. And yeah. then they sacked him. Were like, it was about the wins and losses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so. You wait. So do you, are you saying that they have to make the finals for Wish to keep his job? I'm not saying to keep his job, but okay. there will be people hanging around, yeah. ready to can him yeah. if they don't. Okay, he'll yeah. be walking a tightrope at that point. Where do you think they'll finish? Probably tenth, just yeah. out of finals. Yeah, I had the same yeah. thing actually. And how would you grade their? Performance? I gave him a D. Yeah, I bet you did, you big boy. <laughs> Yeah, I gave him a D as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I guess it just comes down to, you know, they, they traded in Dylan Scheel, huh. spent big on draft picks there, and that kind of indicates that you're ready to, like, shoot up the ladder. Yeah. If you're doing those kind of trades, you want to be pushing finals. And they yeah. are pushing finals, but yeah. if they don't make the finals, or like for, I'd say what, for what they are now, they've probably slightly underachieved. Yeah, well, I definitely yeah. think they've underachieved. Yeah, like they... 
they would be comparing themselves to someone like Fremantle, and yeah. they think they would, you would think that Essendon would think we should be finishing yeah. higher than Fremantle, just in terms of where their development paths have been. That's yeah, yeah just my opinion. But I'd say a D, and I think I finished tenth. So yeah, yeah cool. Fuck. All right. Yeah. I think that's all the teams. I'm actually exhausted. I don't think I've been this tired after a podcast ever. I reckon this will end up being like an hour and a half or something. So good hour time. twenty, yeah. hour fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, that was good fun. Lovely. This will be our last podcast for a little while because, as I said, I'm going to Europe for four weeks, four and a half weeks. Huh. Um, that's all right. We do a podcast every four yeah. and a half weeks or so anyway, yeah. so that, that makes sense. But um, yes, thank you for watching, if you still are. Make sure you get around us on social media. Um, oh, you don't have an Instagram anymore, do you? I still have it, but I don't look at it. I've okay. So you deleted the app. You don't want followers. I had a bit of a social media cull. I that's deleted right. it all. Yeah. Other than yeah. Snapchat. Yeah, deleting evidence. Yeah, Absolutely. Enough. Cool. All right, man. Well, it's been real. Kill. Cool. That's cool. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time on the True Footy YouTube channel.